If you struggle with your serve, this is the video you need to watch because in this video, you're gonna learn four tips for having perfect serve technique. And the first one starts with your service motion. There's so much talk about how are you supposed to get your racket up? I mean, you know, Andy Roddick serves really huge and he takes his racket straight up. Uh, Roger Federer serves really, really huge and he doesn't take his racket straight up. So what is it? Personally, and I think professionally, you're gonna see that it's a stylistic choice. So in this section of it, I'm gonna show you three different types of service motion that you might be able to use to perfect your serve. So the first service motion is what I call the full service motion. And what I mean by full is that like you see Roger Federer or Pete Sampras, you see the entire long motion. You see them always really working with this nice full motion to get the racket into trophy position. Whatever you're doing, you're trying to really focus on getting the racket to your trophy position. So it really doesn't matter what type of motion, it just has to fit your style. The second type of motion is what I call the half motion, which is you see players like Monfi or Roddick use this type of uh, motion where the racket just simply goes straight up. It kind of cuts to the chase. And finally, the uh, third motion is what I call the hold down. Players like Vadasco use a motion where they keep the racket head down longer to really help accelerate the racket up. Whatever you choose, make sure you stick with it and practice it because that's the only way you're gonna master your service motion. And your service motion is so important for the timing and rhythm that you're gonna get the racket up to the trophy position. Now that you know the three main types of swing path, how to move your body and how to move the racket, and really, as Kevin pointed out, it's a stylistic thing. We're gonna talk about rhythm, which is really critical to your success in developing a more perfect service motion. And just like Kevin, I'm gonna go over three different types of rhythm. And the most important part is fitting the rhythm to your swing path so that it flows smoothly and has good timing to it. And there's kind of a musical element to this. And on one end of the spectrum, we have a player like Dogopolov or Bob Bryan also, very, very quick rhythm. Uh, they both have a relatively abbreviated take back with the racket and then immediately go up towards contact. And so there's the per perception that they're actually hitting the ball while their toss is still on the way up. And so I would call this a one, two count, one, one thousand, two. And so as they put the toss up, they're immediately going back into their trophy pose and immediately from their trophy pose going right up to the point of contact. So that timing looks something like this and I would count it like this. I like using one, one thousand, one, one thousand, two. So one, one thousand is the initiation of the, the movement of the motion and two is contact. So this is relatively quick, one, one thousand, two. And so it's very, very quick uh, motion. One, one thousand, two. And so there's, they're really not pausing, waiting, or there's, there's no kind of elongated, kind of flowing motion. Everything just starts and continues all the way through. On the other far end of the spectrum is a player that I would probably use Sharapova as the example. Very long, very flowing, and very high toss. And that's really key here, is you need to match your toss with the rhythm that you use. And there's a little bit of chicken in the egg here. You know, what came first, the really high toss or the really uh, elongated, slow, smooth motion? Uh, and frankly, I don't think I have like the perfect answer to that, but what's important for you is that you consciously choose. And so Sharapova has a very high toss, uh, very slow, uh, kind of deliberate motion with her hands coming down and then going up into a trophy pose. Halfway in between, I think is really kind of a sweet spot. Kevin talked about Sampras, he talked about Federer. I put them both in that category. And I like a three count uh, for that serve. One 1,000 is the initiation of the movement, two 1,000 is trophy pose, and three is contact. So that looks more like this. One 1,000, two 1,000, three. And so again, the toss height has to match the service motion. If your toss is really high and you're trying to go on a two count, then it just won't it won't work, it won't line up. There'll probably be a lot of jagged edges and kind of herky-jerky mechanics. So main takeaway here, I highly recommend recording yourself, see the path that you naturally tend to gravitate towards, and then match the rhythm of your service motion to it so you can have a flowing, smooth delivery. Now Kevin's gonna talk about the right plane to swing on so that you can be successful. 
There's so much commentary out there about how your serve is like a pitch or a throw, and that's sort of true and sort of not true. And it's really important to understand which one you need to be doing. So what I mean is, are you throwing on the right plane? So for most servers, when they start serving, they have this action just like a throwing pitch. So you can see how my shoulders are rotating on this plane right here. Now, if you're thinking that's what you serve on, like you're serving like this, then you're not serving on the right plane. The correct plane for serving for tennis is actually up. So what you have to do is really focus on having this plane go this way, where my shoulder is literally hopping over my other shoulder. So what this means is instead of throwing like this when you're playing tennis or you're hitting your serve, you want to actually focus on throwing up. That's the arm motion or the shoulder motion you need to have. So what this looks like when you're serving with the racket in your hand is going from serving into the court like this, which a lot of players find themselves doing, to actually focusing on getting where your shoulder is going to go over the opposite shoulder. This gives you the greatest range and the fullest range for your serve. If you look at any top professional player, you're going to see how when they go up to serve, they're really focusing on stretching and opening their chest. So their chest is slightly focused on uh, facing up and having a shoulder come over the opposite shoulder. So really make sure an easy way to go out and practice this is to focus on throwing up with the ball and then going out and throwing with your serve. Now that you've got your swing pass down, your rhythm, and you're swinging on the right plane, let's talk about creating more racket head speed, which everybody obviously wants. So this is all about creating snap with the racket, but not in the way that a lot of players assume with using the wrist and hinging forwards with the racket head. It's actually generated by using a combination of shoulder and forearm to release the racket head and snap it towards the ball. And this is a quick drill that you can do to get a, a better feel for this and make sure you're, you're, you, that you're using the right mechanics and not the wrong parts of your body. So a great way to practice is to start off with a, a tomahawk motion right in front of yourself. Make sure that you have a continental grip, by the way, uh, which we're not gonna cover right now, but make sure that you have the correct grip, the racket's on edge, and what I'm gonna do is practice closing the racket face by extending my arm and turning at my shoulder and at my forearm. So there's two different hinges here, one at my elbow, and then my shoulder and my forearm rotating inwards. When you combine those two, that's what people referred to as snap with the racket head. So a great way to practice this is to toss the ball right out in front of yourself and practice hitting the top of the ball and spike the ball down into the court. Start off really calm and smooth, not trying to really go super fast and, and juice it up. But if you do it correctly, you'll actually find that you get a lot of racket head speed with very little effort. And you should be trying to finish with your hand facing to the outside. On the way down, your palm is facing to the inside, and on the way down, after contact, your palm should be facing to the outside. So inside and outside. And that's the exact same motion or mechanic that happens upwards in a service motion. This is just an easy way to practice it, but then the next step is to translate that vertically up towards contact Go up towards contact with the racket on edge in that tomahawk direction and then turn at the shoulder and forearm to face the racket towards the ball. And similar, similarly, you can practice starting with your palm facing inside on the way up towards the ball and then finish facing outside. And then eventually you want to incorporate that into the rest of your motion using the other instructions that we've given you in this video. Hope that's helpful. If you'd like some more step-by-step -step guidance on how to develop a really confident, really effective serve, click the link down below or go to serveactionplan.com and we'll hook you up with a step-by-step -step plan to follow. If you enjoyed this video, please click like. If you have any comments or questions, leave them down below and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos. Thanks for watching.